Thank you, everybody, for uh, for tuning in today. We're going to talk about Onshape and the benefits it has for SolidWorks users, but really, it's it's any CAD user. It just seems that mostly uh, SolidWorks guys are the ones that are most attracted to this at this point in its history. But um, let's take a look at some things. Uh, it's kind of a short PowerPoint. I'm going to cover certain topics, and then I will you know, obviously be working with the software as well. So let's start off. Um, initially, you know, hardware is a big difference between Onshape and your typical CAD system. Um, from an IT standpoint, it's much less expensive, much lower overhead because uh, you don't need the high-end engineering type laptops or desktops or anything like that to access it. You also are not tied to a particular type of hardware. Uh, you know, SolidWorks, they run on Windows 10. You know, the e-drawings, it'll run on, you know, iPhones and Androids. but Really, that's pretty much it. Um, but for Onshape, you know, it's really anything that can connect to the internet. So it's Windows 10, Linux, Mac, Chromebook, you know, phones, iPads, things like that uh, run great on Onshape. Uh, the third point is that it's really easy to access your data. Uh, because it's in the cloud, all you need is access to the internet and you can access uh, the data that you need. So if you're at home, you don't have to do the VPN thing, or some people do remote login because the VPN is too slow, and all of those kind of, you know, things we have to go through and deal with uh, with a typical CAD system uh, aren't there for Onshape. Because it's in the cloud, you can access it. You can access it from your home, from a McDonald's, from anywhere where you have a, a Wi-Fi signal, and uh, you can get on the internet. So it's very easy to access your data, you don't have to wait to get back to the office, you don't have to wait for someone else to get back to their office if you need to communicate or you know, collaborate on something. Um, that can be done very easily. The next thing I wanna talk about is more on the software end of things. Uh, it's data management. Typically what we see is people buy a CAD system and then <clears throat> they roll that out to the company, more and more people start using using it, that's lots of information, and eventually it's so painful to deal with all that information, they say, well, let's go out and buy a data management system. And that is going to cost at least as much as your CAD system. It won't look at all like it from an interface standpoint. And um, it's a whole other thing you have to learn, use, and expense. Uh, with Onshape, they're both built into the same thing. When you buy Onshape, you're buying data management. You're also buying a CAD system. So the nice thing we can do with Onshape is that we can do file management, uh, release management. So there's built-in release workflow. Uh, we see that in the lower right-hand corner here of what that workflow would look like. Also, uh, there's version controls. We can set up projects. We can assign tasks to people to help us fulfill our projects or any other work that we might have done. And because it's atypical from a data management system, there isn't this concept of checking things in or checking them out. Um, everybody is working on the same information at the same time. So you don't need to do that checkout. And what happens when somebody checks something out? Um, you can't see what they're doing until they upload it or check it back in, and then you sync, and you gotta do all these PDM things. You don't have to do that with Onshape. Anything that anybody changes in a particular in Onshape, everyone will see it. It has access to it right away. Uh, so it's like Google Docs, collaborating on the same thing. They see the changes as they happen. Uh, another thing is that everything is always um, updated, the software, so everyone's on the same release. Uh, there isn't this you know, hassle that we have to go through. I'm working with this one customer and they got an older release of software, so I have to you know, be on that older release, but then I have another customer that's on a newer release and I have to run multiple releases. And, you know, when do the new releases come out? Because then we got to, you know, load that and go through all those hassles. Just the typical stuff, right, that we go through. Uh, that's not the way it is at all with Onshape. Because it's in the cloud, everybody's on the same release, right? They're all pointing to the same instance of Onshape. And the nice thing is, is that it gets updated about every three weeks. So you're not waiting once a year for something to happen and then it's a big, you know, thing, big deal you got to go through and you got to learn all these new things. It's incremental changes consistently through the year with Onshape. So everybody has the latest, greatest capabilities. So let's, um, let's look at some things that are more, I'm going to kind of consider more me too 
um, as far as Onshape goes, but uh, Onshape is a parametric multi-body modeling system. Certainly has sheet metal capabilities, direct editing, so that's non-parametric editing of, uh, of geometry. So if you bring in a step file or something, you can still uh, make edits to it. It has things called configurations, which the SolidWorks people recognize the word configurations, but the way that it works is different than the way it works in SolidWorks. It's actually a lot better. And um, it, it breaks configurations into different categories. So you can have, typically most systems, CAD systems, will use kind of a table uh, aspect to that. You know, you can use Excel spreadsheet or built-in, you know, table, but basically we put all our different options and all our different parameters and everything in a table, and we kind of go through the table and pick out, you know, which things we want to uh, build a configuration. And the thing is, is those tables can get really big, um, especially if there's a lot, of a lot of different variations to a part, uh, things like that. So actually breaks it into these three different areas. Um, one is the table, what we're typically seeing. Another is a checkbox, which features or which parts do you see or don't see, and then a variable that can drive information. So by breaking it up like this, we can drive, you know, hundreds or thousands of different configurations just from a couple of picks in Onshape. And then also the way that uh, assembling components is different. Uh, it uses something called mates, which is a familiar concept, but uh, you usually only need one mate um, on each component to assemble something. So it's just a one-step component assembly, which is really nice. Uh, again, if you have lots of components you're putting together, uh, it saves you a lot of time because it's just really simple to add them. So let's take a look at a couple things here, just to kind of highlight uh, what I was talking about. Uh, so what I have here on our screen is just a uh, basically a block with a chamfer on it, right? Extrude and a chamfer, nothing special. Uh, one of the things that I did is I put in a surface too, right? Kind of cutting through these. So I just have this single block, and we can see it's just called part one down here. And I can name it whatever I want, assign any time of uh, material properties and colors and things like that to it. But what I want to do is kind of highlight some of the differences um, or you know similarities, I guess, with uh, um, multi-body modeling. So I'm going to say, let's split this block. So I'm going to say, let's split him, and we'll split him with the surface that we see here. And we'll say, okay. So we can see that the split is here, and we have now two components, right? Part one and part two. And now we can start working with this. So this is a nice thing about multi-body is that we can start with an initial concept and kind of part it out, break it up into the different pieces that we need. Maybe we're getting this from the uh, industrial design guys, but we need to kind of break it up into different components. So what I'm gonna do is take a look at this. We'll say, let's kind of hide one of the parts now. And we'll say this end of the part, we want it to be um, maybe a plastic part. So I'm gonna come in and say, let's just add um, some rounds on here maybe on some of these edges, because you know, plastic parts always have rounded edges. And then I'm gonna come in and, and, and shell this out. So we'll just kind of say, let's just remove some surfaces here. Now we've got kind of our end cap that we're working with. If I go back and turn on our other component, and I do this a little bit differently, and this is just to highlight um, functionality and on shape. I probably wouldn't really design a part like this, but in this case, I want to make this guy a sheet metal component. So I'm going to go over um, to sheet metal. Now, there's a couple of different ways of working with sheet metal, but I'm going to say, let's convert this part into a sheet metal part. So I'm going to select on him, and sort of like shelling it out, um, I'm going to pick faces that I don't want to exist in my sheet metal part. So it's converted to sheet metal. Let's take a look at what it's done. It basically puts plates. So this is kind of unique on every surface. Right now the plates are sitting on top of that solid. If I flip it, now they sit on the inside of the solid. So the solid part that I had originally there is kind of the bounding box for that. And at this point, um, we can kind of say, uh, where do we want to put our bends, right? Because right now they're just plates sitting on each other. So I could say put a bend here, put one there, and put one there. So now we have a sheet metal component. You kind of take a look at it like this. Um, <clears throat> we can take a look over here. And here we can see the flat, flattened out area of it. And we can also see a table for the different bends that are here. And also down below, we can see the, the ones that are also ripped. So we can change our bend allowance and, 
and all of those types of things here. If I'm looking at this from a manufacturing standpoint, you know, we want to nest this, make a lot of these in a particular, um, you know, nesting operation uh, so we can make more use of the material that we're uh, cutting it from. So in this particular case, um, I'm going to say, let's take this bend and let's uh, convert it to a rip. And then let's take this one and we'll convert him to a rip. So now we've kind of broken out our pieces there and we want to re kind of reconnect them up. So I could say, let's just take this one and make it a bend there. And let's take this one and make it a bend there. So now this is going to nest a lot better. You'll notice that it's also been changing over here. And I could have done the work over here. The nice thing is, is whether I'm used to using tables or using the flat working in the flat pattern or working in the bent up version, I can do that in the sheet metal application. So now we have our sheet metal component. Uh, we'll turn on um, our other part here, our plastic part, and we can see that they go together. Let's do one last thing um, kind of quickly. Let's just do kind of a sketch on the top plane here. And I kind of want to put a, a shelf in here. So we'll say let's put in maybe a, a sketch like this. And what we want to do is we want to kind of use this as a shelf. So I'm just going to say, let's just drag this up to this point, um, take this one, move it over to there, take this, move it over to here, and then finally grab this one and we can move them out to there. So now we've kind of created a sketch that fills in the whole bottom here. And I did that, it's kind of a unique way of, of creating something. And we're going to take this, let's use it, let's make it a sheet metal just to kind of use another operation that's in uh, the sheet metal application. In this particular case, um, we converted a part, and that was the first time. And we can extrude out information, so you have some kind of profile, we can extrude it into a sheet metal part. And the other way is just to thicken something, which is what we'll do here. So we just kind of pick on the sketch, and we can see that it's made a sketch. And if I wanted to flip it the other way, you know, certainly I can do that. We certainly have all the controls here as well for bend allowance and K factors and, and all of that. So what I have here are now three parts. Right? Um, this isn't technically an assembly, although these are individual, all standing, standalone parts. I can use them in other assemblies, make drawings of them, all of that. But technically it isn't an assembly. And I actually put the shelf down at the bottom and I really don't want it at the bottom, I want it at the top, but at least I have all the parts here. So let's go to assembly. And I'm going to say, let's just bring these parts into the assembly. And what this is going to allow me to do is kind of put together the assembly in the way that it might uh, be in real life, instead of just having three components here. Now, any one of these parts I can take and drag around. What I want to do is, is maybe grab um, a couple of these and then just say, let's just kind of fix them so they don't move in space. So now they don't move around. But this guy does. Right? And what we want to do is maybe assemble him into the uh, enclosure that we have here, but not just at the bottom. So there's all kinds of constraints in here uh, for making mechanisms. You know, we have ball joints and planer joints and sliders and all those types of things. I'm just going to just use a regular constraint. But you'll notice, as I mentioned before, it's really easy to assemble parts. It can it, we can grab different edges in different locations. But I'm just saying, take the middle of this part and put it in the middle of this one. So now I have a constraint. So you notice it was just two picks. Typically in a CAD system, I might have to constrain one edge along another and do an offset from a plane and things like that. Um, here you, know, you just don't have to. You can just pick two, uh, two of these mates, put them together, and, uh, and you've got something there. So this is just a real quick uh, kind of a me too uh, presentation of some capabilities that are in Onshape uh, that, you know, typically your typical solid works. It might be a little bit different the way I get about it but uh, I can certainly generate the geometry um, that I need to. Now, the other thing I talked about was configurations, right, and um, how they work. And so I have a, an example here of a bearing. So the bearing has, you know, an inner track, has an outer one, and then it has the bearings here, uh, or the balls. And then there's also um, some sealing um, seals that I guess I should say that can go on either side of this to seal it up. But let's take a look and what the configuration would look like for this. So like I mentioned before, I've broken this one down into those three different areas, so we're highlighting those areas. 
but the first one is, you know, does this have like a flanged wall on it or does it have um, a retaining ring, you know, on the outside? And, and we'll show you that in a second. And then here's a um, variable that's driving the diameter, the shaft diameter here. So if we get a bigger shaft, you know, all of these things are going to adjust to that. So just for one parameter, one variable, it can drive a lot of things. And then finally, here's the third one where I just have the seals on the outside and the backside here. And I can either turn them on or off with this check mark. So it's using three different um, variations. Now the thing is, is I can use in this variable, I could have any size bearing. So think about it. I can have a bearing of 100 different sizes and it's either going to have a flange or a retaining ring on it or none, just standard like we see right now. And then it could either have seals on it or not. So if you think about just putting that in a table, we could have easily hundreds, if not thousands, of different um, you know, entities and entries into our table. And fishing through that and trying to find the right one is you know, sometimes difficult, depending on the components that we're dealing with. But look at this. I just have three different areas, and I can capture all that information in just these three tables. So how do we go about doing this? When we create those tables, it puts little things over here. And the first one is saying is the standard bearing style. Remember, we said there's also a flange style, which um, goes and puts a flange on the outside here. And then there's also the retaining ring. And again, this just kind of puts a groove in our bearing. Uh, we can come over here and say, what's the diameter of the bearing? And I could say it's one um, and um, let's say 13. 30 seconds, right? So it changes that. And then is it sealed or not? I could say yes, it is sealed and it adds the seals on the outside and the backside there. So as you can see, just by entering in three things, I can, it replaces that ability or that, what we would typically do is going through a large, huge table, trying to figure out and having to enter all that information in. I didn't have to barely enter any information in to get these kind of configurations. Uh, so the way it goes about making configurations is very different, but very easy to use and incredibly powerful. So let's go back to our PowerPoint here for a minute and talk about uh, some other things. And I put this under unique capability. So the other things, you know, other than being in the cloud, which is really cool, and being hardware independent, which is awesome, um, there's some other things that are really unique uh, capabilities to Onshape. I kind of want to highlight those right now. So the first one is a fully featured mobile app. So SolidWorks, right, you can get e-drawings and you can put it on your Android or you can get it for your iPhone or something like that. And it's a different application. And it, um, you know, you have to download it, put it on your, um, on your device, which is fine, but then um, it only views things. Right? And, and that's what its purpose is, right, is to view things. Uh, Onshape approaches things differently the viewer that Onshape uses is the CAD system itself. So depending on what rights you have, either you're viewing something or you're editing something, but it's the same software. So that's what's really powerful about it is you can have your phone, you can just use it in, in kind of a viewing mode and you can measure and explode things and do all that type of stuff. But you can also, if you have the rights to edit it, all the features are there and you can start creating geometry, editing geometry, things like that. Now on your phone, it might be a little bit more difficult because the screen is so small. Um, but certainly for reviewing things and, and collaborating, that's a great tool to do that with. In fact, uh, one in four people access Onshape with their mobile device, which is really interesting. It's a lot more than I thought it would be. And um, the thing is, is that it's not just a viewing tool, it's also, um, you know, an editing tool, it's, it's on shape itself. So it's a really kind of a unique capability there. And the other time, or the other thing I want to talk about, uh, which makes it unique is real time collaboration. So as I mentioned before, when something happens, everybody sees it. Well, everybody can be working on it at the same time as well. So there's the ability there to um, work together with somebody. And you talk to a lot of companies and they'll say, no, we don't do, do collaboration. You know, we just assign it to one guy. But you know, what if push comes to shove, we got to get some new product out the door. Um, wouldn't it be better to have multiple people working out? You're not going to have multiple people typically working on the same part. Uh, you could, 
right? And actually, there's no problem with doing that. But typically, you might have a product that has multiple components. And there you can have a whole bunch of people working out. They're all taking their own pieces and working on those. Uh, you're developing things two, three, four times faster than if you had to pass it around to each individual person in a serial fashion that you typically have to do. And if you have a PDM system, then you're checking it in and checking it out. You're not seeing what the other guys are doing to it. There's all kinds of issues uh, involved with that. Another thing with Onshape is that uh, there is unlimited undos and redos. We can go back to any point in time and restore our model back to that point. So you never lose anything. We can also compare differences between things and uh, there's this ability to branch off. So typically in CAD, we do a save as. You know, I'm going to do a save as and do some modifications and see if I like them or not. And if we do, then, you know, maybe I'll use that as my current design or maybe I'll copy, you know, those things that I've added into my original one. But there's always these, you know, two separate things or three or four separate things. Onshape has this branching capability. We see an example of the tree. This would be the feature tree here, this blue line. And um, here are all the different branches that we can branch off and try different ideas. If we like any of those, if one or more of them, we can merge them back in. So everything is involved with the same product. We don't have these saved as separate copies floating around all over the place and trying to keep track of those and you know which one should we use and all of that. It's always revolving around the part, single point of truth. And then there's no crashes. Um, so let me let me look at a couple of things here to kind of... Uh, highlight some of this. So we'll close this guy out. <clears throat> here we have a motor. And what I've done is I just hit this button over here and I said, I want to share this with somebody else. I want to share it with, with Nick. So I've shared it with him and I'm going to move over here. And the thing is that both he and I are going to be um, working on this. So here's Nick. I'm going to bring him in as well. And he's he can be, you know, in the same building. He can be in a different country. It doesn't really matter. And I could send him um, some information. First of all, one of the things that we could do is he could follow me. So as I zoom out, it zooms out on him. And you notice that my mouse uh, looks like an arrow. His is a hand. And what I could be saying is, you know, I need you to put a gasket right here. And I can even talk to him. Um, if he isn't right here, I could just say, and I can directly send it to him, you know, put his name on there, um, or it could be just a general note, but, uh, you know, can you add a, a gasket? I'll say add that. And so Nick over here gets that message, gasket, and then he can come back and say, you know, sure. Reply back. And I can see that. So we can text back and forth. We can send images. We can do markups. We can do all of those types of things. So now Nick knows what he do. And I could actually assign him a task if I wanted to do that as well, um, to have him work on, on this thing. But what we want to do is, is have Nick work um, over here and create a, uh, a gasket for us. So he's going to come in and say, let's create a gasket. And he's just going to pick on a um, couple sketches here. And maybe, you know, not make it that thick. And then maybe go in and change the color to, I don't know, blue. All right. So you notice, the minute Nick did that, I'm seeing it. When he changed the color, I saw him change the color, everything. So we're working on the same thing at the same time. Um, so you can see that, as, and I could be working over here on this end, you know, maybe patterning this guy around. But the thing is, is that we can both be working on the same product at the same time. We see what the other guy is doing instantaneously. It's not that check in, check out, you know, upload, sync, all those other things you got to do with a PDM system. Uh, saves you a lot of time. And it's a great communication tool because everybody's seeing the same thing at the same time. Another thing um, that I mentioned is that um, we have the ability here to um, do infinite undos and redos. So let's uh, leave our um, motor here for a second and take a look at this guy. So we haven't really looked at the history, but here's the history of this particular uh, component. And I can dive down um, deeper into the history, kind of expand it out even further and show even more. 
And what I'm going to say is I'm going to go right back here. This is part that I imported and then I made a bunch of edits and changes to it. So I'm just going to say, let's compare that. So we're going to do a compare from when I imported it to what I finally did. And so we can see this here. Um, what we see is the final product. So these are all the different commands or edits that I made to it. Um, since it was imported, I haven't really, you know, when it was imported, there's just that, right? So we don't see anything over here, but I can kind of play through it. So it originally started looking like this, right? That's what I brought in as a step file. And then I, then I kind of split it, I moved it apart. And as I'm dragging this, we can kind of see this. And then I kind of cocked that end down. And then this is where I finally ended up. So we can take any two moments in time and compare those and kind of see how we got to where we are now. Or we can always jump back to that previous one and say, this is the one that I want, really want to use as my main design. So it's very, very easy for us to go through and, uh, and find um, how things have changed. And uh, also, you know, visibly like this, but then also uh, feature by feature. And again, because it's an import, I have no features on the import side because you know, I just brought that in. Uh, one other thing that I mentioned was branching. And so here we have this, I've used this example too many times, two components, right? And I'm trying to figure out how to put them together. So I came up with different ideas. Um, we could say, let's just make them a single component. So these are all these little branches. Instead of doing save as, it's the same part, um, but we're just doing different variations. And you'll notice I can go through these ideas in a design review really, really quickly. Here we're just you know, putting screws in to the bottom to fit those together. Uh, maybe we want to weld it. But the thing is, is that we can come up with all these different ideas, and then I could always just come in and say, I want to merge that in with the main idea, because the weld design is the one that we want to go with. That seems to be the cheapest, or or whatever. So let's um, let's try something here. I'm going to say, let's make a new document. And we'll just call it a couple of letters on my keyboard. Um, so with this, I'm going to say, let's create, um, oh, let's say a sketch. Let's pick on this plane. And we'll say, let's sketch out something. And we'll, I'm just going to do something simple here. Um, something like this. And we'll take him and extrude them out. Drag them up a little bit. So this is what we have. Um, pick the top face and say, okay, let's chamfer that. Turn off our planes here for a second. And eh, let's put in a hole. And we'll say, put it maybe in the center right there. So now we have a hole. Coming over here, do some more things. Let's say it's going to be a, a hollowed out part and a plastic casting. I don't really know yet. I'm going to pick on here. Now, one of the things I mentioned is that <clears throat> on shape doesn't crash and it doesn't. It, well, software does. I, I'm going to say it, it has to, but you'll never know if it does because all it does is just roll over to another server in the cloud and you just keep going. Um, and it saves everything, so everything's preserved. But um, I want to simulate a crash. So let's say my browser crashed. So I'm going to kill my browser right here. I go up, boom, we're gone. Okay, what do I do? I'm going to come over here. And you notice I didn't save anything. I didn't save anything this whole day. You don't have to save. There is no save button. Um, let's start up uh, on shape here. And what we'll see is everything that I've done so far today has is there. It's available to me. Even this little made up part, if I go and call him up, I've lost nothing. I can come back here and now, you know, continue working on my part. You know, maybe I wanted just the whole just to go through that much of it. And I can continue working. I've lost nothing. So it really allows you as a designer, as an engineer, not to have to worry about saving, not to have to worry if you're going to lose your work. It's kind of unsettling at first, to be honest with you, that it saves everything, because I always make mistakes when I do things. But um, it saves those, but it's just part of the history. And you just keep going ahead. Um, you can be aggressive. You don't have to say, 
man, you know, if I'm going to shell this out or I put this round in here, it's going to blow up on me. You know, how many times do you have those things running through your mind? You don't have to worry about it with Onshape. So with that, that's kind of what I wanted to cover today, some of the nuances and differences um, and advantages of using Onshape. So with that, I'm going to roll this back to, uh, to Sierra. All right, thanks, Bill. So I'm looking into the queue and it looks like we do have a question. So the asker says, is there a way to lock files or only allow certain users to make modifications to certain files? Yes, absolutely. When you do a share, and I should probably go into this, um, I'm gonna say, let's share it with, let's share it with Nick again. I just wanna highlight something real quick for you. When we do this, here's what we can say. So it would be shared to Nick and he can make a copy of it. He can export it. Maybe I don't want him, eh, maybe I don't want him to export it, right? I don't want this wandering off anywhere, um, but you can delete it. He can delete it if he wants. And when I say share, now Nick has those capabilities. I have full capabilities, but he has only those. Um, and I could say, instead of editing, I could say, really, I just want him to view. And then he only has view capabilities. He can't change anything. So there's all kinds of, you know, minutia that we can change to dial in exactly how much you can change stuff and how little. So very, very easy to do in Onshape. And as soon as I don't want Nick to have access to it, all I have to do is hit that X, he can no longer access it. So I have total control what they do when they have access to it, and then I can take it away anytime I want. Good question though, thank you. I never great. get questions. Yeah, <laughs> that was a great question. And a great point, again, back to the collaboration piece that really sets Onshape apart. All right, so it looks like we don't have any more questions in the queue right now, but as I mentioned earlier, you can reach out to our Onshape team on our website, on LinkedIn. We also have our events page on our website there as well. Again, that is onshape.eacpds.com. All right, with that, I hope everyone has a great weekend and thanks again for spending some of your afternoon.